Uh, we are here to discuss a uh, topic briefly on contending for the next generation. And uh, uh, I will put much emphasis on the contending. We are contending for the family, we are contending for the children, but my sermon this afternoon is focusing so much on the contender. Because I believe once we look in the light of the contender, in the light of what to contend for, the contender, uh, the, 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 the contender will stand ground or the contender will have a chance to contend for the next generation. And so I know we have had many messages about children, but today we want, we want to talk about who is this man or this woman who will contend for the next generation. And so my emphasis, uh, it will take, uh, I will go to Ephesians quite a lot, but I will refer to uh, Psalm 127. And so we want to look who is this contender, who is the man or a woman that God will use to stand up and be the one who will speak and who will talk about children, who will, who will make a case because of the next generation, our youth, our families, because that is the platform through which we get to contend for, for, for the next generation. The church gives us a platform as we are doing in the children ministry, as we are doing in the youth church and, 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 and many other avenues. And we start at home as the Englishman says that charity begins at home. And so as we look at the life of the contender, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 20, it is introducing us to a famous place uh, to, to, to a famous uh, phenomenon that we have, we know, and that is the place of spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is not engaged just like that. We are introduced to the, to the concept of the full armor of God. And so I want us to look at what are these things that, are, uh, that we should see in the life of the contender or the person who stands to contend for the next generation. What should we see in this man or woman? And, and so that we can be able to, 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 to be sure that this man or woman will stand for the next generation. I will talk about three things. And if, if, if I have a young person in the service, we could acronym this to an app. An app that is in the phone. But let me say what this app is all about. The A is about an attire. We want to talk what is the kind of attire of the contender. The contender is not a man who is just donning anything and everything. Yeah, the contender is not the man of the, of the group that was saying someday, my dress, my choice. The contender has an attire. And what is that, this attire of the contender? The full armor of God, not half. Not quarter, mm -hmm. not a dad. Mm -hmm. It is the full armor of God. The full armor of God. We want to talk about the full armor of God. The next thing we see in the contender in this passage, the, the contender has a posture. Mm -hmm. The contender is not just a man. There is a kind of posture we see of the contender in this passage. And the, what is the posture of this, of this person? The, 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 the position or the posture is standing. We will look at who is the standing Christian. Stand. If, 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 if there is a place that I would even I would ask for more time to spend, it's in this area of standing. So we want to look at what is the posture of the contender, and that is to stand, stand the standing Christian. And lastly, we, we are seeing in this passage that not only is there, is there an attire, a posture, but there is also a practice. And that practice comes towards the end of this passage, and that is praying in the spirit in all occasions. The contender has an attire, the contender has, has, has a posture, the contender has a practice. And so let us delve into, 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 into looking at what is this all about. The, 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 the attire, which is the full armor of God, uh, uh, Paul is giving, introducing us to uh, something here that has six pieces. The, uh, the armor belongs to God. It is not our armor. This is the armor that is given to us. And I would like to ask us, maybe, uh, and this is something that we see in the scripture. Scripture ex explains scripture. The Bible we, uh, 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 is, is, is the, uh, the Bible 
explains itself. Why, why, why am I saying this? Because in this day of age of cats and organs, we are really looking at what men will say. But if we will be men and women of the world, you will realize that God has spoken. Not once has God spoken. Yes. The, 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 the writer says that God has spoken, twice have I heard. So the scripture has a way of explaining itself. And if you look, uh, and, and, and I want you to, to, to flip back to your Bible, in Isaiah chapter 59, you will start seeing some elements of the full armor of God being worn by the Lord himself. So when God says that this is my armor, it is not a cliche. This is actually his armor. He has used it. It is tested. It is proven. And it is effective. And that is the armor that we are seeing. When God is describing about the, how the status of things were, uh, and when he was looking for an intercessor, that the Bible begins, uh, the, 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 this chapter is talking about that God was looking for a man to stand in the gap. He was talking about that it is sin that has separated us from him. That when we are trying to call upon him, and it is like we are trying to scratch, but we are not getting to him. He now comes in verse 17 and tells us that God himself, having seen that there was nobody who could stood in the gap, he put all righteousness. We see him that he's putting other elements of this armor and he brought about deliverance of his people. It is about, it is time we get to know that actually the full armor of God, it is, does, it is not ours, it is God's armor. And that is tells you, now this is not an invention of the pastors, this is not a discovery of the bishop, this is not about, not about a denomination, it is that God has a very a resource for you. God has a very something for you to wear on, and you can wear it, and you can be a contender. You can be a man who can stand for the family. You can be a woman who will stand for the children. You will be a person who has credentials to stand, and that is the attire. You wear an attire, and that is called the full armor of God. It has been tested, it is proven, and it is effective. Amen. And so, this is God's armor is mentioned twice in this passage. And there, and God is, it, 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 before we talk so much about it, the Bible is talking about in this passage, put on. It is one thing for the attire to be availed. We have talked about the attire, where it is sourced. You know some of you, I know you're very sensitive here in the city of Everett. You're very sensitive. And even the, uh, even the, the, the so some of you don't try the girl that has come in the city. I've uh, seen that they, they have very new ones in this city. You just just walk, you drive the tractor straight, nobody has, it is zero mileage. You walk into Creta Automobiles, I saw them here, you just drive that zero mileage counter. So even I saw, I went to a Rupert's Mall, I saw uh, clothes that have not been worn by anybody else. <laughs> that is the city of champions for you. But besides all of this, now God is saying, put on. Put it on. The armor is availed, but brothers and sisters need to appropriate it. They need to wear it. You need to start donning the availed resource to you. The availed attire for you. And that is the full armor. So I needed to make sure I, 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 I notify us those two things. That first of all, this is the armor that it, it belongs to God. And the next thing is that God wants you to wear it. Actually, he's saying, put on. When he's saying put on, he's saying that it, 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 it means it must be accepted and we must... Uh, we must accept it from God and we, uh, to, to, to cover ourselves and even to use it for where, uh, against our enemies. And we need to know we don't choose what to wear and not what to wear. We cannot choose to say that we will only want one to pick the sword of the spirit. There are men and women who pick the sword, but they don't have anything else. And so they are not effective. You don't choose what to wear and not what to wear. It is about you put on the full armor of God. And so the contender must have this attire. This attire 
has six components which I will not delve into details. These components are actually salmon in themselves. And maybe one day the senior pastor will take us through this, this six series. And this first one we see is the belt of truth. We see the foundation. We are seeing start from then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Everything I will say is starts on from the foundation of God's truth. We are told that this truth is needs to be guarding our loyalties. In the Roman Empire or in the, in, 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 in the culture of in which this, this scripture is written, is a, is, is, is a culture where the, 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 the soldier used to have, uh, you, you used to have a, a, a belt, and this belt was not just a mere belt. This belt used to guard everything around the loins. It is, the, it, is, it is from this belt that everything, anything, everything else to do with the armor could be attached to. And this is the foundation I want to submit to us. Everything as far as contending for our sons and daughters is concerned. We begin from the scriptures. We begin from the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. We must tell our children the truth. The truth of God's word. What does God say? You know, if we look at the, start, uh, at the fall, it is still the distortion of the bell that was happening. The Satan came and said, Did God really say? Did God really say that you should not eat from this? And, 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 and I want to request us. Let us be men and women who are grounded in the truth. Yes. Are you found in the truth? Stop talking about, the, let me tell you, in Christ is the answer ministries, it is a platform for you to grow. It is not a platform for you to be fatted like a cow. It is a place for you to grow. Are you chewing the scroll? Are you the man who is eating the scroll and saying, like the river, like, like Ezekiel and saying, it is as sweet as the honey from the honeycomb. Are you going? For the Bible study? Have you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Are you rereading it, rereading it, and chewing the, chewing the cards? Or you are the man who just waits until Pastor Logo comes and speaks here about the app, which is a summary within less than 40 minutes. And then we continue being malnourished such that we all say that we will now be tossed about with this every wind and wave of doctrine. You know, let me pause here and say, unfortunately, what has happened to the post, I was reading the version of AFP in terms of the news, and they were trying to, uh, they, 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 they are saying that half of the numbers of these tests we are, we are discussing to do with posts, uh, these are children. Half of the number. So we are talking of if it is a hundred, about about fifty are children. So, and this the problem is that these children were not exposed to the truth. There was no guarding of their loins with the belt of truth. Let's talk about maybe the contender. The contender was into heresy. The contender was not having any substance as far as the truth is concerned. The foundation of our, our for, for the foundation, the, the, of, the foundation of, uh, of our attires is, is in, first of all, the truth of God's word. We are seeing the breastplate of righteousness uh, in verse 14. Uh, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Breastplate, uh, breastplate was like the kind of, of, of covering that used to cover the biggest part of the body. It would start maybe from the neck, going all the way to around the waist. And this had to do with the guarding of the vital organs. And this guarding is not in so much of our efforts. This is in what God has done. We see it is righteousness. And we see the Bible tells us that Abraham believed in God and it was credited to him as righteousness. We don't, we don't, our own righteousness is described as filthy rags. It is about just 
coming to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and we get our full covering. Stop taking cover in me as a man of God. I'm so small to cover you. Some of you, are, I'm so small to cover you. You have a great God to cover you and he covers you in his righteousness. Amen. Amen. As we contend for our children, I'm calling upon, as some of us, uh, Lord, oh, the reason is why sometimes we don't get to start talking about these matters to do with children, is because the enemy keeps accusing you. He keeps accusing you. You don't feel like you can be a person who can point the child the right way. I want to tell you, stop depending on your own righteousness. There is a finished war. On the cross, the finished work of the cross of Jesus, and that is what for you. And so, stop depending on your own. Come and put on the breastplate of righteousness and the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That is what the Bible tells me. And so, let us rise up. Let us be men and women who will wear the breastplate of righteousness. We are told of this other dark beast of the armor that does not have a name, but we, the Bible tells us, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Some have titled this armor as the shoe of the gospel of peace. But this is about our readiness to declare what the Lord has done. Do you realize that as we talk about children ministry, as we talk about the next generation, as we talk about youth ministry, as we talk about family, we are, God is not inviting us to like Isaac Newton to discover the law of motion, uh, to discover gravity and things like that. We are coming to just declare what the Lord has done. You are just coming to declare, Lord, have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the world. So Satan, he has given us a victory. You are just coming to tell children that there is a victory available for you. There is already a work done for you. And the, the, the whole thing to do with shoes, it is not sometimes with our, with, with our feet. Sometimes it is, huh, what am I going to say? You are going to say, if you go to Nyadiwa, this is what the Lord has done. If you come to Eldora, this is what the Lord has done. We are not inventing a message. We are not coming coming with new age revelations. We are not coming with new ideas. We are coming to declare all oh, the chariot, that old ragged cross that was, that was, that was, that was, that, that was, uh, that Jesus died and shed his blood for me. That all, oh, that I will cherish that old ragged cross. It is, it is the cross that gave victory in the past. And even this present day age, the digital age, we still can rely on the cross of Jesus. Amen. We are talk, uh, I, this summer was not to do with the, with the uh, armor of God and, uh, uh, detail by detail. But allow me to finish quickly and say the shield of faith. We are told in verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. We are raising children in a never vulnerable environment. We cannot give them a sure protection. Except, except by faith. We build, build nice houses, we do concrete walls, we put electric fence, we, we buy insurance policies, we do life covers, we do all we can as a way of communicating our protection to children. But I want to ask us, brothers and sisters, may all that be not with what we bequeath our children, that we give them clothes, that we give them education, that we give them covering from, 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 from risks and everything else can be assessed, but we never give them the shield of faith. The contender must have this shield, and he must also give this shield. Faith is what we don't know. We don't know, by the way, let me tell you, there are people who are seated in some boardroom somewhere. They are pl planning very funny things to do with your child. They are, they, they, they are thinking of a product. They are thinking about your son. They, when they talk of a customer, it is about your son. It is about your daughter. But I want to call us, to invite us, to be men and women. That we, 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 we don't so much focus, because I want to tell you, you will even run out of energy as you discover that this is the threat. The other one 
is a drug, I want to call us to the safe place, the safe place of faith. If yeah. there is a heritage of faith that we can pass on from our children, let it be that it is that uh, like, uh, as much as they will gather around when you are gone, they are dividing the spots they are saying. There is something that mommy or daddy say that that was as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. That when they are gathering and they are talking about the way, they are saying there is this one that we must and sure we do. We must, wherever, whoever we marry, we must serve the Lord. That is the heritage of faith. Who is like me who grew up in a village? There are these people you knew. They did not have much. How about what they were the ones who were carrying the drum? You know the one that is made of the, uh, the skin, the heightened skin on this one side and the other one side? They are the ones who are carrying it to church. They don't, they don't have any, anything much. They are just going to church and they come back in the afternoon. They were so poor, they only, they, and they come, they come, they go to church in the morning. You might see them coming home in the evening. Look at where their children are today. Look at where their children are today. I'm, I'm requesting us brothers and sisters, as God is going to lift us, and let me tell you, the lifting is God, it is not ours. Yes. God is going to lift people in Sita Melderet. Amen. He has already received a president from this area. Oh, yeah. So God is continue going to lift people from this area. But as he, God keeps his head of the bucket, I want to ask of you, will you keep the end of your deal? And that is to stay in his house. And that is to have faith. Will the son of man find faith in Eldoret when he has done his end of the body? The helmet of salvation. I would not want to stay here for long. Maybe we may not get a picture of how the helmet was important, but let us look at the, the riders in our city of Eldoret here. If the duty of the, the rider of this uh, a motorbike is without a helmet. You know, a tragedy of death is just fighting, waiting. And this is what I want to submit to us. And this is very serious. Are you riding through this life? Coming even to, to sit a member or even following our message online? But you don't have a helmet. It is just about an accident away, and you are going to receive a wage of sin, which is death. There is a gift of life. Are the gift of God, and that is life eternal in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. Please stop mocking this life. Stop joking around this life. You are, you are, you are trying to, you, 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 you are like this person who rides through the motorbike without a helmet. It is just a very dangerous part of fear. Wear this helmet, the helmet of salvation. And lastly, is the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. And the word of God must be in hand for it all in our lives for us to take offense against the kingdom of darkness. What am I trying to say about this whole attire thing? I'm requesting, I'm asking two questions. What are you wearing this afternoon? What are your children or the next generation that is around you? What are they wearing? If you see exposures in their body, go back to the Bible and ask God, God help me to contend that until I see my son, my daughter, having the full armor of God. Amen? Amen. The contender must have the full armor. The second thing that we see about the contender, the contender has a posture. The, the whole business that is happening in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20, it's a, it's a, it's a lot that is happening. There is, the, there is a sword, there is a, there is a breastplate, there is a, there is a shield, there is everything that is there in, but there is a sports chart that we are introduced to. Let me just take, give us a context. Ephesians gives three postures of a Christian. The first one is seated. If in chapter 2, Paul is telling us that we are seated in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus. By the virtue that you are born again, you are seated with the Lord in the high places. You know, by the way, some of us forget that we are in the Lord's table. That's why sometimes we lose our value of ourselves. If you remember that actually I'm seated with the Lord in the high places, you don't go defining yourself with a big spoon. You remember that actually my father has a better meal for me every day. Yes. 
Hallelujah. We are seated with the Lord in the high places. And he tells us, walk. Walk worthy of the calling. He said, don't walk in the, walk, in, in the way of the giantess. And that is, that is in chapter 4. There is the, post, the second posture of the Christian is walking. But now, towards chapter 6, and which you will find that it is in the most repeated posture, it is time. God is looking for a man or a woman who will stand. I want to tell you, you know, sometimes we think spiritual warfare is so much of your activity, is so much of your doing, and is so much of many things you do, until when you see brothers and sisters who are coming from spiritual warfare, they are harassed, they are hard, they are looking as people who have really fought it properly. We are not, we do not wage the war as the world does. God invites us to a higher way to fight. And I, so I want to tell you, we are, in, by the way, we are in war 24-7. So we are not people of fatigue. We are not people who get tired. We are not the people who come with injuries. We can fight a different kind of fight. And so we fight in a different way. And so our poster is just to start. Start bound. Start your ground. It is a start. God is looking for a woman or a man who will stand. I want to tell you, are you in a family with witchcraft? Just go there and stand. Just go there and stand. Are you in a family that is under oppression? Just go there and stand. Are you in a school that is having weird things uh, uh, that, that is even failing academically? Just go there and stand. You know, when we are talking about standing Christian, we, we, uh, and we mean that we must be people with a backbone, people with a spine. In the head of terrorism, and I want you to refer you to your safari books, whether it is enter, encounter, in these pages, in the beginning pages, before you start looking at the content there, there is a, there is a synopsis or a, or, 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 a, or a message there that gives us why the safari. Actually, that is the title. And why the safari? You realize that there is an article one time that was written in Daily Nation at the height of terrorism. And there was a great concern. There is a time that the great concern was to do with the radicalization of the Muslim youth. But this writer, Massey Bloomfield, observed that for him, of the great, great, or greater concern, it is not the radicalization of the Muslim youth. He said it is the un un radicalization of the Christian youth. The Christian youth has nothing to stand for. He has nothing grand that they can die for. You know, at least there is a, the, 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 this one, we are talking that they have a wrong cause that they are dying for. We have here somebody who believes in the Lord, but they have nothing worth dying for. Mm. Mm. And that is a problem that we have even today, that there are men and women who lack a backbone, people without a spine, people who cannot, who don't stand up for anything at home, they don't stand up for anything in the workplace, they don't stand up for anything in the church, they work for two. We need to be men and women we need to be Christians with a standing. Mm. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Mm. Stand up in his strength alone. Mm. Stand up on the promises of God. What does the promise of God say? You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. God has said you are the head and not the tail. God has said that this is the way what you in it. Are you standing up in the right of God's word? We must be men who must just forsake our, this whole thing of being spineless. You know, an octopus does not have any spine. <laughs> if I put it on, the, on, on, on this, 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 this table, it will go slowly everywhere. You don't like him. You, don't, you guys don't look like you like eating octopus. You look like the people of Nyamachong. <laughs> And that never trauma, you know it's shaped because there is something at the center. What was is that? The bone. There is a bone. There is something structure that can give you shape. Oh, yes. Mm. It tells you that this one 
you, you, do not, you, don't even, you cannot even bend it with your fingers. You cannot break it with your fingers. In fact, if you have to break it, you have to look for a very, very sharp and a heavy, heavy metallic marker, or you look for a hard tool. I want to ask you, when people look at you in your workplace, do they know this is the guy who does not have a back hole? We want just things to go east. We just drop the octopus on the table and it will go slowly to the front. We just go to what we want to do. There are people, I'm sorry to say, and I ask God, I ask you, don't see other people. Ask God, show me where I'm lacking as far as, far as the next generation is concerned. Do I, make, do I stand and make a stand? Am I a person who stands up for something? Do you stand up for something? I'm a uncle too. I'm a member of Sita Mildred. What do you stand for? Is there anything that if we are asking some, we are thinking of something, that one call keeps, uh, keeps again. That one, that, that cannot happen in the house of kids again. It cannot happen. Yes. If, 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 if you want to do that, just get him out of the compound. As long as he's in this family get together, it cannot work. It will not work. Do you have some people who are like that? Unajua, if that person comes, the karofo must be put under the bed. It cannot be drunk. The whole event to do the family get together must um, stay sober until that guy goes home. <laughs> you don't know such people in your families? Yeah. Why is it that that person is not you? You must be just a man who makes a start. Do you know some things actually do not require a lot of struggle? In your home, you just need to start and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for you, you, you mean, uh, let me say, even as far as like the, the, the generational curses and everything that has happened, you just need to start and say, this is the past, this is the future. And there is no marriage between this, this past and this future. It ends here. As far as as far as as far as uh, these curses, as far as these this miscarriages, as far as these deaths are concerned, it ends here. Yes. It is not going. We, uh, the future uh, cannot tolerate this. It ends here. And I believe there are men and women that God is inviting in Sita Eldred to just take a stand. Yes. Just take a stand. Yes. Simama, kwani konini? Just stand. Yes. You are not standing in your own might. You are standing out in the might of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Just take a stand. Say, this is where it is draw, it, it, it drops. Draw the line and say, this is as far as you can come. As far as this territory is concerned, this is the kingdom of God. And it is God who influences everything. It is Jesus who is the king. Yes. But there are people who just watch their marriages as they go to school straight. You are just following the memes and what they are saying in the social media. It was not a marriage for the social media. It was your marriage. And when God is coming like in the Garden of Eden, he is asking, Adam, Adam. He is calling for the man or the woman who is in there. What is happening here? And so, it is your space. It is a place for you to answer to God. So take a stand. May we not have spineless people in Sita Melbourne. Yes. But as we come to the end, and maybe as, 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 as I have alluded to this is that we sing with the children every DVB, stand up, stand up for Jesus, you soldiers of the cross. On the hymn that we sang here a little earlier is called, this, called Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. All that the crowd is seeking son. And in the end, it just talks about that when he shall come with a trumpet sound, or oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone and faultless to stand before his throne. Whether we choose to stand now or we don't stand, there is a season, there is a time that we will come before his throne and we must stand. Yes. May you be found faultless. May you be found faultless before the throne of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have talked about the contender has what and what? Attire. Has an attire. Which what is what is that attire? 
What does this uh, the contender have? A posture, which is standing. And the third we want to conclude is that the contender has a practice, and that is praying in the spirit. The Bible is telling us here towards the end uh, that praying in the spirit at all times in verse 18. Praying in the spirit and at all times. This is, we are invited to a practice here that does, that seems not to have limits, and this practice lead, seems not to have boundaries. This is a practice that is, this is a practice that we can say it is in 24-7 in the life of the contender. And this is praying in the spirit. I want to invite us, brothers and sisters, if we are to contend, we must wake up in the place of prayer. Place of prayer is not where we come like ATM, we get what we want and we go. It is like a room we go, we walk into, we lock in the door, we throw away the key and we just stay there. That is the place that God is inviting us to be in, to be in as contenders. Contenders are not, they do not visit the prayer room. The contenders stay in the prayer room. They, they receive their children in the prayer room. Even if they are to lose, like Job, they will lose them in the place of prayer. They are just there in the place of prayer. That can rain, can sunshine. Right now we are planting. We will still see them in the harvesting season. They are still in the place of prayer. Whether they are thanking God or they are crying and mourning over this and that, but they are found faithfully in the place of prayer. Amen. Pray in the spirit on all occasions. Brothers and sisters, when we look at what is against the family, when we look at all these alphabets that are against our children, it will be all over by a man or a woman who is found in prayer in the spirit at all times. Let us bring down strongholds as you walk into your workplace, as you look for the unga. Say, I'm giving my children more than the unga. I'm giving them a heritage. And so I must wage war against the kingdom of the enemy. Let me tell you, your property, your sweat is a blessed sweat. Start declaring the victory over it and saying this one is not the kind that people fight over it. Even if I'm God, this one will be blessed. It will be still serving the kingdom. This will be a seed that will be multiplied hundred folds. So if I have a hundred acres, it will not be divided. Actually, what will happen when I'm gone? It will be a thousand acres. Whether they will be in mass or they will be in this arm, there will be just the principle of multiplication. What am I trying to say is that we have to be men and women who are awake in the spiritual senses and are just there in the place of prayer. Sometimes we are just praying until we go to the tomb. Make prayers that will make effects hundreds of years to come from now. Make prayers, let me tell you. Maybe start praying for your grandchildren, even if they are in some knees somewhere in China. Maybe your daughter-in-law is in China. But just make prayer. Pray, make prayers over, over, over your grandchildren. Whether they will have your black, black, black color, or by that time it will have been neutralized, what is needful is that they must be children of God. Amen. And so we must be people who are faithful in this place of prayer. We must be people as contenders who are even bringing children in this place of prayer. Place of prayer, sometimes we make children, it is a place for meal, or just saying grace, invite children into the time of prayer. Make them see in your prayer channels, pray with them. Pray with them, walk with them through your prayer, prayer life. Let them see the battles you are fighting. Let them see the victories you are God is giving you. Even sometimes the way you are having failures. Let them see that we pray over this and we fail, but still God has been faithful. We are sometimes want to present a picture that is not as far as our children are concerned. Let us just present ourselves as people who are laboring in the place of prayer. Maybe you are asking, Pastor, what do we pray for when we think of these children or next generation? I have a picture of an arrow. Uh, I think the media team will help me to display an arrow. And I will explain three things to do with an arrow. I, uh, we, we read this in Psalm 127, verse 4. Like arrows in the heart of a warrior are, are, are children born in one use. And this, this is the arrow. The arrow, we could see, from what I'm seeing, it has like three parts. 
There is the feathers you see at the base, there is a shaft you see, and there is a tip there, isn't it? And so maybe by, by talking about praying in the spirit, we could, we could look at these three and maybe start engaging ourselves in prayer for these three, these, first of all, these three areas. Uh, the feathers, for those who have never interacted with this kind of warfare, long time ago, but people used to, to, to fight using these kind of things. So some of you are the people who know Dushka, or uh, that is what I, I, I was I was talking to my son, and I was talking about this whole thing of fighting. He told me for him he knows Dushka. So the feather, the feather, and by the way, when even when people invent, I was looking at the, the rocket, and I think the media team had a picture of the rocket. The rocket is like a just, um, uh, it's just like a. Um, and an innovation of them, and we it. So those people ought to have paid copyrights to the Masais or the El Gero, the, 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 the Bokots and whoever uses the Arab. But anyway, they be have allowed to use it. To, we, we, let's go back to the Arab. The base represents the feathers, and this in the life of the child, I, I, I usually say it is the character. <coughs> The feathers determine the direction, and character will also determine the direction in which a son or a daughter will go. Let us not produce arrows that do not have feathers. Arrows that can, 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 can when they are short, they cannot go any direction. They don't have, we, we, we want them to go to, 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 we want them to go in east, because they don't have feathers, they end up landing in north. There is nothing wrong as when people are not in where that God wanted them to be. And there are people who are struggling. When they are struggling, even when they have everything, because they lack character. We can see, you know what? Favor can even take you to the top. You can be favored by the president or whoever can favor you, and you're placed at the top. But what can keep you at the top is character. What can keep our children in the destinies that God has for them is character. And so as we go for children ministry, we work on this. We labor as children ministry workers, I can say that, that as pastors, we labor to see the character of Christ conform in the lives of our children. The contender must think about the feather, the character. Always pray that the character of Jesus, the character that is in tandem with the Spirit of God, will be produced in the life of our children. The biggest part of the arrow we see is the shaft. And this shaft represent the identity. The identity is, is who you are. Do our children who will know who they are? I was, I, was, I was telling the first service that one of, there is a class that we used to do with my, our senior pastor here. And one of the assignments we did was to watch this cartoon called Lion King. Uh, by the way, go to such classes where you are given some, some funny assignments like those. So with my pastor here, we decided to watch Lion King. And so Lion King is about this small lion called Simba. This Simba loses his father and, 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 and is chased away by some hyenas. Uh, they were trying to get to eat him. He lands into a, a, a place that is in the wilderness. Just before the vultures eat him up, there, there comes up a wapo called Pumba and, and, and a squirrel called Timon. This wapo and this wapo and squirrel, they, they rescue this Kasimba. And so once they rescue this Kasimba, they go with him to a place that they call Hakuna Matara. <laughs> they see, you see things to do with children ministry are not boring. Some of you have been moaning since I started preaching, but now I can see your teeth. And you know, the teeth from this region is another thing. <laughs> So, <clears throat> this Simba is taken to this place, Akuna Matata. But this, this water and this squirrel ensured they, 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 they made this lion come to the place of knowing you forget about who you are, 
you just stay in this place. They actually, the philosophy of that place called Hakuna Matata, it says it means no worries. You, you, you forget all about your worries, you forget about anything all of your days. Just, it's a problem free society, Hakuna Matata. There is even a song to do with that. It's just that I cannot sing, sing it on this other. So this 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 this, this, this lion grows up. They tell him you don't roll, you don't eat eat other animals like gazelles. Here you eat worms. So a whole lion grows up and it becomes a big lion. This lion has never and it is a male lion. It has never rolled. This lion has never even eaten meat. This lion just eat worms, war worms. Uh, do do's things like that. Uh, things matata. like yeah, hakuna matata. It's just it's what the squirrel eats. And so, until one day, another lioness uh, uh, strays into this compound, and it's just baffled that there is this lion. It's just romancing here with dancing with some gazelles, eating with the with the It doesn't know that it's a lion. <laughs> And it, is, it comes and there is, it, 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 this, this lioness comes with another uh, monkey called Rafiki. And they just have to tap and make this lion wake up, know who you are, remember who you are. Mm. And this lion remembers. By the way, as he told that he remember who you are, he rolls. <laughs> and once he rolls, everything else falls into place. This lion does not stay again another night in Hakuna Matata. This lion goes back to the place that it was chased. It goes and kills the, the, the hyenas. It goes and removes the, the lion that had been the father. And that lion called Simba becomes the king. What am I trying to say? Identity is very much important in our children. You must be the man who will show your child that there is a lion of Judah rolling in your heart. And whatever you find yourself into, whether you get a retake, you don't lose, you don't, you, in your campus studies, you know you will send your child to, to, to Canada. They failed one exam and they had, they had passed the exam in the nursery school. They don't know they passed. But they go and fail, fail one exam there. They lose their meaning. You start drinking yourself stupor. Remember who you are. You are not a failure. It is a paper who said you are a failure. You are not a failure. You go there, you go, you, a girl rejects you, you are drinking yourself silly. I want to tell you, you are loved, you are accepted. Yes. <laughs> But because we have not told them about like this, Simba, remember who you are. Identity is lost. Have you seen how we, far we have fallen? The enemy has made our boys forget they are men. And they are looking for another boy to marry. Have you seen how the enemy has made our women, our girls to fall? That they are looking for a companionship in another girl. We need somebody. Uh, we need a lioness of a woman here who will stir up some girls here and tell them, remember who you are. We need men in Sunday school and in the youth church who are stirring up the, the lion of Judah and telling their sons and daughters, remember who you are. Identity. You are a man. Things cannot go wrong. I mean, things cannot be going wrong in sit of elderly. Oh, the, 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 you, you, you go to Sunday school class. This is what I tell boys. You, when something happens in this class, it is not all, all girls are screaming, woo -wee, woo -wee. and you as a boy, you are joining them, woo -wee, woo -wee. No. <laughs> Even if you don't know what you're dealing with, go to the problem and say, what is it? Oh, that is what a man does. <laughs> We must remind our sons of and the daughters of their identity. Yes. Pray in the spirit that their identity will not be lost yes. of our sons and daughters. Yes. Let me uh, conclude with a tip, and that is the mission. The tip or the sharp part of the of, of the of 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 the, of, of the arm indicates the mission. And you can imagine if you have an arrow that does not have that tip. And you have gone to fight. Will you ever, you, or even let's say, forget about fighting. You've gone to ask for food. Will you go or come back home with food? No. no. In fact, your, your, your arrow will be massaging the, 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 the field, isn't it? It is until it has a teeth that it, it, it now does what it's supposed to do, isn't it? And that is what God is calling us to be seriously think 
about as our children. What am I on earth here to do? Mm. Yes, I've known who am I. Now, what am I on here on earth to do? There is something that only you can accomplish in this world. God, when he thought about that task being done, it's only you who can do it. Your family, there is, all, there is that matter, and there is no one else who will do it. It is only you who will do it. And as you stand up, I pray that you will be a man clear on a mission. We will be men and women who are clear on why on earth am I here. You know, Jesus as a small boy, the book of Luke explains something good to us. About this time, Jesus as a 12-year-old boy, he's taken to the temple, and Mary and Joseph lose him. And they start going back for even more, almost close for, for a full day. And they realize that they actually lost him. When they come here, they come back, we see Jesus telling, we see Jesus telling uh, the parents, didn't you know I have to be about my father's business? A 12-year-old is clear about their mission. They know what is their father's business. We must raise our, the next generation to be so clear what am I on earth to do. If you meant them to be doctors, let them know what we are doing. We are having quite a number of challenges. I am not just a doctor. I am a doctor with a mission. I'm not just a pastor. I'm a pastor with a mission. I'm not just a person. I'm not just a wife. I'm a wife with a mission. I'm a husband with a mission. I'm a child of God here to accomplish something specific. I must be about my father's business now that it is day because night is coming when no one can work. Amen. And so I'm still in this point of praying in the spirit on all occasions. I don't know, some of you are wondering, what do I pray for? But I think those three things are essential enough for us to rise up this evening, uh, this afternoon, and just wind up this service with just some prayers. I feel like there is, we need to just uh, expose ourselves to the presence of God and ask God, God, give, make us contenders. Make us contenders. Let us not just be spineless people in this sanctuary. Maybe we could rise up and turn this meeting briefly to a, a, a time of moment. Uh, I know our pastor will come and pray for us, but there is no better person suited to pray for you than yourself. You have the authority, you have the power, you have, the, you have all the resources that God 